Today, I would like to introduce about three famous buildings of Louis Kahn. Firstly, I am going to introduce about the Kimbia Art Museum. They completed in 1972 and located at the Fort Worth, Texas, United States. The building is originally used to keep K. Kimbia's art collection. The element of natural light is the main focus of the design and creates elegant spaces that are perfectly suited for the arts that it houses. When you approach the building, you see the exterior of six grey concrete and travertine walls. This makes up the north and south wings of the building. The calm building is simple yet modern, free of excess ornamentation. The building is home to over 1 million pounds of travertine limestone, combined with the concrete and white oak floor indoors. The neutral tones allow the colours of the art in the galleries to stand out. The design of the wall is quite impressive, much like Roman aqueducts. The wall curves are supported by a few columns. Each wall is only supported by four square columns that are each two square feet. Khan collaborated with the structural engineer, Dr. August E. Commandant, to design the exact structure of the walls. Together, they came up with a design that is curved more like an eggshell than a half circle. Each wall is equipped with a skylight. Under each skylight is an aluminum screen that distributes the light downwards into the roomy galleries. Upstairs areas lead into glass wall courtyards. For the materials, the symmetry of design is enhanced by the use of natural materials like travertine and white oak, combined with glass, concrete, stainless steel and aluminium. The second building that I'm going to introduce is Phillips Exeter Academy Library and it was located at Exeter, New Hampshire, United States of America. In the library, it has an almost cubical shape. Each of its four sides is 111 feet wide and 80 feet tall. Khan structured the library in three concentric square rings. The outer ring, which is built of loot bearing brick, includes all four exterior walls and the library carrier desk immediately inside them. The middle ring, which is built of reinforced concrete, holds the heavy book stacks. The inner ring is a dramatic atrium with enormous circular openings in its wall that reveal several floors of book stacks. People enter the library from the ground floor and climb up a grand set of stone stairs to the first floor. Coming up the last step onto the first floor, one can immediately perceive the relationship of reference area, circulation desks and book stacks. Khan found this aspect to be important so that the visitor can easily understand the plan of the building upon their entrance. The beauty in the architecture of the first floor, however, is what gives the Exeter Library its fame. This main floor reaches 70 feet in height and soaks in natural light from a clerestory at the top of this space and from large expanses of glass on the north and west side. From this 50 feet square space visitor can spot metal book stacks and readers seven levels above two large holes puncture perfectly into the walls. The upper floor contains book stacks for 250,000 volumes and many facilities for students. On this floor are approximately 450 different sitting types scattered among the building in different rooms, such as some lounge and on the chair that encircle the building along the exterior of the fourth floor. The academy was finally content with their new library when it was complete in 1972. Khan was successful in meeting all of the requests through its own principle of design. The building is functional and meets the needs of the reader first while still standing as an innovative structure in itself. Lastly, I would like to introduce the Jatia Sangsak Baban that is the National Assembly Building of Bangladesh. The building was completed in 1982 and located in the city of Dhaka. Khan's key design philosophy optimizes the use of space while representing Bangladesh heritage and culture. External lines are deeply recessed by porticos with huge openings of regular geometry shapes on the exterior, shaping the building's overall visual impact. The Baban consists of 9 individual blocks. The 8 peripheral blocks rise to a head of 110 inch while the central octagonal block rise to a head of 155 inch. All 9 blocks include different groups of functional space and have different levels. Interlinked horizontally and vertically by corridors, lifts, stairs, light courts and circular areas, the entire structure is designed to blend into one single, non-differentiable unit that appears from the exterior to be a single story. The main building has divided into three parts, the main plaza, sub-plaza and presidential plaza. In the main plaza, the most important part of the main plaza is the parliament chamber. The chamber has a maximum height of 170 inches with a parabolic shell roof. The roof was designed with a clearance of a single story to let in daylight. Daylight, reflected from the surrounding walls and octagonal drum, filters into the parliament chamber. The artificial lighting system has been carefully devised to provide visual obstruction to the entry of daylight. A composite chandelier is suspended from parabolic shell Roof. This chandelier is turned consists of metallic web spanning the entire chamber that supports the individual light fixtures. 
In the South Plaza, the South Plaza faces the Manic Mia Avenue. It gives us 20 inches high and it serves as a beautiful exterior as well as the main entrance to the Parliament Building. Presentation Plaza, the Presentation Plaza lies to the north and faces the Lake Road. It functions as an intimate plaza for the MP and other dignitaries. It contains marble steps, a gallery and an open pavement.